in a large portion of the world. A Samsung smartphone is likely to be someone's first smartphone. But who was responsible for the company's ascent to the top and its respect for profitability, creativity, and excellence in everything it does? Lee Byung-chul was the youngest of four siblings born to father Lee Chan-woo and mother Kwon J. Lim. His family was rich and had property, but were a junior branch of the Lee house and lived in the province of Yuryong, Gyeongsangnam-do, in the Korean Empire. Lee Byung-chul went on to Jundong High School in Seoul for his secondary education. He then moved to Tokyo to go to Waseda University for his graduate studies. However, he did not complete his degree after returning from Japan, as he had spent some time maintaining the homes and land of his family. Around this time, the Japanese government also started to force cultural integration and Japanization. It may have taken some time after this for people to figure out how to deal with this kind of situation. He ultimately founded his firm, Samsung Trading Company, which traded groceries. The name was an allusion to a constellation, about which Korean mythology tells the story of a well-meaning dragon battling an evil one. With the trading business, Samsung Lee Byung-chul traded noodles and other consumer goods produced in and around Daegu City and then shipped to China and its regions. As World War II started, businesses made more money because there was more demand for things like food and care products that people needed. On the other hand, people in Korea and Japan spent less money on things they didn't need. Because of this, Lee's company was able to do well, and in 1947, it moved its headquarters to Seoul. With the conquest of Seoul by the North Korean army, he moved to Busan and focused on Chil Jidang, a sugar factory he established in the city. During this time, Lee had a partner named Cho Hong Jai, who was in charge of splitting Samsung into other types of products. However, they had a disagreement over their different management styles, which led to their split. After that, the Samsung team was split into the Samsung Group, the Hyosung Group, Hankook Tire, and other businesses. Are you enjoying this story? If so, remember to subscribe to our channel. In the 1970s, Samsung brought more insurance companies, a petroleum plant, a company that made nylon, and a store. In the 1960s, Samsung started a number of electronics-related businesses, such as Samsung Corning, Samsung Semiconductors and Telecommunications, Samsung Electromechanical, and Samsung Electronic Devices. Samsung and Sanyo also started working together at this time. In the 1970s, Samsung Sanyo created the first black and white televisions for the Korean market, which were a huge success. In the 10 years that followed, the company made 5 million TVs, which was a big deal in 1978. Samsung Heavy Industries was one of the world's largest ship builders in 1974. In the late 1970s, the firm established Samsung Electronics America and the Suwon Research and Development Center. Samsung first entered the telecommunications technology market in 1980. Samsung started out by making telephone switchboards, then moved on to making phones and fax machines. In 1988, they presented the first mobile phone, the SH-100. Lee Byung-chul perished from natural causes around this period in 1987. His third son, Lee Kun-hee, took over as president of Samsung at first. Lee Kun-hee decided that the company would focus more on new technology rather than goods that weren't as valuable or profitable. Samsung's Galaxy S, the first smartphone from the business, was released in June 2010. Since the Galaxy, Samsung has made dozens of cell phones, and each one is better than the last in terms of new features and system improvements. The Galaxy Note Edge was a big deal when it came out. Since then, many phones like the Galaxy S8 and S9 have used the same curved screen technology. Since the success of the Tab S2, Samsung has launched several excellent tablets, one of them being the Galaxy Tab Active 3 in 2020. Samsung has come a long way since it made its first smartphone in 2010. Its latest technological advances 
have made it possible for the company to make smartphones that can be folded, like the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold and Galaxy Z Fold 2. Lee Kun His son, Lee Jae-yong, has been in charge of Samsung since his father's passing in 2020. Samsung is making more progress in the field of artificial intelligence now than more people have access to modern technology. The Galaxy S8 introduced Bixby, Samsung's built-in AI system. Samsung plans to spend $22 billion on cutting-edge technology. 5G and AI will get the most money. Samsung intends to hire a thousand new scientists in AI-focused educational research facilities around the world. Projected overall investments soon are expected to exceed $206 million, while also providing new development opportunities in next-generation robotics and telecoms. Samsung Electronics did not say how much it will spend in each of the highlighted industries, but they did say that mergers and acquisitions are being thought about. That's all for today. Do you use any of Samsung's products or have any suggestions for a future video? Tell us in the comments section. We'll be back next week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.